Hey, Craft Buddy, it's a beautiful 75 degrees and sunny here in Illinois today, and what better excuse to get outside and tackle my to-do list for my patio and pool area. Come along today, I'm gonna be sharing everything from DIY furniture to storage solutions, and I'm gonna help you get set so you can enjoy your outdoor space all summer long. You're watching Whiskey and Wet. My name is Whitney and a huge thank you and welcome back to my Whiskey Craft Buddies who are here each and every week to DIY with me. If you're not already a craft buddy but you love today's video, be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss a future Whiskey and Wet video. Now I've got a lot to tackle today so let's get started. Up first, we're going to tackle the need for hidden outdoor storage. I always need to store stuff, but I don't want it out visible. So I'm grabbing a planter from Walmart as well as this 24 inch wood round from Menards. Now you can use whatever planter you want. And if you have scrap wood, you could use that for the top. But the first thing I'm doing is taking some one by two scrap and measuring how much I'm going to need to inset it onto this wood so that it's going to act like an actual lid. I'm going to get my pot set on the bottom where I want it, trace it on the wood, and then I'm gonna use that initial measurement to lay out my scraps. These were from my recent fence picket video, so I just had these laying around. You could also use scrap from the value wood section or just check around if you've got pallets or extra wood or you can buy a one by two as well. I am going through and using my two and seven eighths measurement that I did for my container. I am using a mark on there. And the key here is you're gonna use wood glue and some nails. Now, if you don't have a nail gun, no worries. All you need to do is get some finished nails with a hammer and you can add those in there. The nail's gonna hold it now, the glue is gonna hold it forever, and I'm working my way around the outside of the container. Now, for two sides, I could easily use the 11 inch measurement, but then for the sides, I had to cut them down because I needed to make sure that I had one inch clearance around the inside of the pot. Because if you look, there's a one inch lip around my planter. So you're gonna have to allot for that when you're measuring but two and seven eighths got me in from the outside and made sure that my wood was going to fit. Then I did a dry fit and here you can hear it. It actually sits in and it's not gonna go anywhere. That's exactly what I was looking for. You can do this for square pots as well, but I like that it's going to sit in there and not move, especially if people have drinks on it because I'm gonna use it as a side table. I'm giving this a really good sand, especially on the edges because these pine edge glued things usually can be a little rough. But once I got it all smooth, I wiped off the sawdust and then it's time to finish it. I decided to use this early American stain because this is what I have all around my house. And once I'm done in the summer, I'm gonna bring this inside for the winter and use it for storage in our house. So I'm all for using stuff longer than just its intended use. Also highly recommend that you seal the wood, especially if it's going to get rained on or you are gonna be putting drinks on there. Now I know that my triple thick from Verathane says interior, but I promise you I've done it outside. It does not yellow. I just make sure to do three coats of that and it is going to be protected. I just like that. It goes on really well. And like I said, I know it says interior, but I've done it before and it works well. If you want to use an exterior one, that's fine too. Now there are so many different ways you can use this. I'm going to use it for beach towels next to these chairs out by our pool. But because this pot has a stopper in the bottom, you could easily add ice and have it be a little cooler next to the pool. You could also have it house shoes, toys, anything you need to keep corralled and hidden. And the best part is this could be used indoor all year round. So if you don't have an outdoor space or don't don't need this outside you could easily make it for inside your house just the same this area of our deck is always where our guests sit or grandparents when they're watching Finn swim but it can get really hot so I headed to Home Depot and Walmart to get my supplies to make this a shaded oasis I grabbed the same pot that I got from Walmart as well as a Walmart five gallon bucket I did that just because it was white but you can get them at Home Depot wherever a couple bucks and then you're also going to want a two foot section of one and a half inch PVC that was like 350 from my hardware store I'm going to start by putting that piece of PVC in the center of my bucket and just using some painters tape to keep it centered. You're not going to need this to be super heavy duty, but we are going to add some quick crete, quick setting concrete mix. And with the painters tape, it's just making it so my piece of PVC stays in the center. Now I had this left over in my garage from when I made pumpkins out of cement a few years ago. So I only had a little over half a bag. I would recommend you do a whole bag if you're buying it, but I didn't want to have another half a bag sitting in my garage. I took it out back, added some water, and I started to stir with some scrap wood. That was a fail. So I grabbed my little pick shovel from the garden and that helped so much better. 
I got it all mixed. You want to make sure that it's all combined with the water and then let it set at least overnight. I let it sit two nights. Then I brought it up on the deck, put it into the planter, and it was time to make it look a lot prettier than a bucket with some concrete in it. I added some of this paper that we recently got in a package just to help fill up the concrete. And also before I put the bucket in the planter, I removed the stoppers in the bottom just so then that way I will have drainage for my plants. I added a bag of miracle Grow, and I actually need just a touch more, but I was able to add some impatience, which do fine in the shade. And I also grabbed a cap for the PVC just so in case it rains, then that way my little tube is not going to get filled with water. My last step was I grabbed this umbrella because we needed more shade. This was a $50 one at Home Depot. You can find them inexpensively a lot of other places and I love that even though it's windy this heavy base is pretty and it's not going anywhere. Now whenever we have guests that are sitting not swimming but wanting to watch Finn swim they will be right near the action but in the shade. I also am thinking about potentially moving this down near Finn's sandbox because we also need some shade there and I won't have to worry about this falling over on him because the bottom is that sturdy. Did you happen to see this concrete top side table in the beginning of the video? Well, I'm going to show you how I made this for under 15 bucks. You're going to need two two by twos. I ended up getting the weather treated ones. And when you're grabbing them at the store, make sure that you're looking down the wood so they aren't bowed. As in all my wood videos, I'm going to be using my seven and a quarter inch Ryobi miter saw to cut my two by twos. But don't worry if you don't have a big saw because you definitely don't need one. You can easily do this project with a miter box and saw. You can get this at your local hardware store or even on Amazon. They're really inexpensive. They're all usually under 30 bucks. Sometimes you can get it under 20. And the great thing is you can do straight cuts as well as 45 degree cuts and you just use your arm strength to get it done. So I used this for years before we upgraded to a saw. So don't worry if you don't have a miter saw, you don't need one. Oh, and real quick, before we get cutting, also make sure that you are always wearing eye protection. If you are in a situation where you are doing a lot of cutting and you're gonna have a lot of sawdust in the air, also think about a respiratory mask. I wanna keep all the craft buddies safe while we're wood building. Now, as always, let me give you the cut list. This is actually a plan from Craig's website. They shared some plans on social media. I got scrolling through their website and found this. You're gonna want four pieces of your two by two cut to 23 inches, and then eight pieces of your two by two cut to eight and a half inches. Now, speaking of Craig, the plan calls for pocket holes, but you don't have to use pocket holes. I'm just gonna show you what I do, and then I'll show you how you could do it without pocket holes at the end. So we are gonna do one and a half inch pocket holes that we're going to need to drill. So this is my normal Craig jig and all I need to do is take this little tool that will come with the set and adjust my drill bit to one and a half inches. So then that way it can go deep enough into the wood. This little tool comes with the small kit so you don't have to worry about needing something else. And you can get this for about 40 bucks. So not super, super cheap, but also nice to have on hand if you build a lot. As far as installing both of the bits into your drill, it's just like a normal drill bit, which makes it really nice and easy. And then my brother actually got a new Craig jig from us for Christmas, so he gave me this one to use. I have never had one of these before. I've always used the smaller one, but I was really excited to have this and try it out on this project. Thanks, Reed. This one's really nice because you clamp it in and you are able to just drill and go. You don't have to do a lot more of the clamping, but this is considerably more expensive. So if you're looking into getting a way to make pocket holes, leave comments down below. I'm happy to give you my opinion, but that is really quick and easy. But honestly, you can also do it with the smaller one. You just pop it apart, clamp it to your table, and it'll take a couple extra minutes, but you will save a ton of money. So there are a couple different options. I will link them down below if you want to look into that. I haven't really went into detail on the Craig jigs before, so if you have more questions on it, leave it down below. I'm definitely not an expert, but I like learning and I like sharing what I'm learning with you guys. Now we are going to use a clamp and some counter pressure to start to build this. I'm just following the plans. So I'm taking my two and a half inch pocket hole screws. These are the exterior ones. Notice they're blue. So because this is going to be outside, I want to make sure they're exterior screws and I'm using the clamp as well as counter pressure to drive these screws in. We're gonna start by making kind of a rectangle, attaching them all, and then it's going to be kind of this big rectangular cube thing, which is kind of an oxymoron, but you'll see in just a second. This is also a great time if you don't have a clamp or you're new to this, get a friend. It's always nice to have counter pressure and somebody else holding it to kind of help keep it straight. Now also, as you're making this, you may have to push 
a piece over to get it to line up and then screw it in. Don't worry, that is normal. Sometimes I get to the end and I'm like, oh, it doesn't line up, but you just have to move it over a little bit. That's fine. So if you're not gonna use pocket holes, which you wanna make sure that are on the top and the bottom of this build, you can just take a screw and go right through the joint from the outside. You'll see the screw, but honestly, with the concrete on top, it will be no big deal. So you can do that as well. Just make sure you get self-tapping screws or drill a pilot hole so you don't split your wood. Then after a quick stand and a stain with my favorite early American stain, I let it sit outside to make sure it was fully dry. And then I used the Varathane triple thick again to seal it. Now for the top, it is a under $2 stepping stone from Home Depot, but you could get these anywhere. It's a 12 by 12 concrete paver. So once I grabbed that, I used some liquid nails that I already had. You just want to make sure that they are water and weather resistant. Also Gorilla Glue sells something similar so you can grab whatever you like. Then if you've never used a caulking gun before, it can be a little intimidating, but I learned last summer, so I'm happy to share. You can cut the bottom off with that little handle there and then pop this little pin out and you can stick it right in there to help create an opening if you're having an issue with them coming out. Then I'm going to take that liquid nail and I'm going to run it all the way around the top here because we're not going to screw into the concrete. So I'm going to put it there. It was heavy enough to not use clamps, but if you want to use clamps, you can too. Let it sit for about an hour just to make sure it was all good to go. And then it was time to install it right next to my DIY sofa that I built last year. I'll talk more about that in just a bit. But I love this. It is a great height. You could pop this in anywhere. And if you are into the modern organic style, this would also be great to put inside your house. For so long, I've wanted one of these PVC drying racks that you can put for pool clothes or also use outside for a drying rack. Catherine at Do It On A Dime did this a couple years ago. I saw that one. I've seen a few other tutorials and I decided to make my own to fit my budget and to fit my area. So I'm using five pieces of three quarter inch PVC as well as some different pieces. And I went through and just started messing around I used these pipe cutters, which were about 10 bucks, which are so nice. You literally put it on the pipe, mark where you want to cut, and then you crank it. It's one-handed, super quick and easy. I'm so glad I bought these, and they have them on Amazon too if you don't want to have to go to the hardware store. Then I started measuring and kind of messing around with it to get my own version. And the nice thing is, as long as you know the concept, you can make this for how many rungs you want, how tall you want it. All the things as long as you have a little bit of basic math so after a couple days of messing with it this is what i came up with so here is how you can recreate this at home as well so from the store like i said you're going to buy five 10 foot pieces of the pvc you're going to want 10 cut to 36 inches two cut to 30 inches two cut to 12 inches four cut to six inches two cut to five inches two cut to four inches four cut to three inches, and then two cut to one and a half to two inches. Also gonna wanna pick up some of these attachment pieces, which I will get into all those details in a minute, but you need T brackets, 45 inches, and then the corners. So once you know where everything goes and you have it all cut, you can honestly put it together in less than 15 minutes. So let's break it down slow and steady so you can figure out where everything goes. 10 pieces at 36 inches long are gonna be your main frame where all the green pieces are now. Then you're gonna grab your two 30 inch pieces. I wanted it to be a little bit shorter, so that's why I did 30 instead of 36 inches on those two bottom pieces. After that, you're going to do your two 12 inch pieces down at the bottom and attach the 45s to that. And then from the top, the order of the pieces in between the T-slots are three inches, two inches, six inches, four inches, five inches, and then three inches. Now here at where all they come together, you're going to need six of the three-way corner elbows, four of the 45 degree elbows, and then 10 of the T pieces. Now that I have it all together, I plan to use some of this clear cement to create some longer pieces, but then that way I can take it down in the winter, use it in my basement, by my laundry room if I want, or we can just store it in our shed. This is going to be so helpful this summer, not only for towels and swim stuff, but I'm going to put some of our clothes out there to dry because we don't have a clothesline. Now we're going to hop into the vault for this one because I've gotten so many questions on these planters that I made last year. So I wanted to share it again in case you missed it because these are so inexpensive and so easy to make. I used Anna White's Cedar Planters Plan and I made two of them. I will link them down below. I love Anna White plans. Now let's talk about what you're going to need to make them. 
So for each planter, I made two, but for each individual one, you're going to need four large fence pickets at six feet long. We're going to need three one by two by eight furring strips and two one by three by eight furring strips. With the furring strips, it made all the lumber under 15 bucks to build one of the planters. So both of them come in under 30 bucks. Now for the cut list, you are going to do six pieces of fence picket at 18 inches long, six pieces at 17 inches long. We also need four one by twos at 18 and a half inches long and the same thing four one by threes at 18 and a half inches long. Those are going to be our legs. And then you're also going to need to keep some of your pickets as scrap and then one by twos for finishing later on. And you'll see what I mean in a second. So once we have all of those cut, we are going to sand them down per usual, and then we're gonna assemble our legs. I did this kind of in an interesting order, and that was because I wanted the two-tone look, and so I needed to stain pieces separately so I didn't have to try to tape and stain and do all of that. So I am taking two of my one by two pieces along with my one by three, using some wood glue and my nailer to attach them in kind of a bracket L shape. The second one by two is just there for support, so then that way the one by three isn't flopping around everywhere. Once I made all of my legs, so it's gonna be eight for two planters, I went through with jet black stain from Varathane, and I love this because you can still see the wood grain, but it's gonna give it that dark black modern look. I also did all of the fence pickets in Early American from Minwax. Varathane also has an Early American color that I like. Let them dry overnight, and then we're gonna assemble. So we're gonna start by putting the two legs down with the one by threes on the bottom. Then we're gonna take our 18 inch pieces of stained pickets, line them up, flush them with the top of those one by three kind of brackets, and then we're going to use the nails to attach them. This is the same process of the toy box that we made for Finn a couple years ago, and I love the way that she does in her plans the legs, and so this was easy for me to follow, and once you start doing it, you will get the hang of it. Repeat that step again, and then you're gonna put the two sides with the one by twos down like this on the flat ground and add the three 17 inch pieces on one side, nail them the exact same way, and then we'll flip it over and do the 17 inch pieces on the other side to create our planter box. So now that we have this, it's not super structurally sound, it will kind of move around. So we wanna measure the sides with our one by threes to figure out what our first piece of trim is gonna be. I cut two of those and then I measured in between and it was about 16 inches, so then I cut two more pieces. I stained all four of the pieces for each of the planters, that black color, and then once those were dry, I was able to attach them with some brad nails again. Now I'm going directly into those leg braces first, and then I'm doing a couple just additional for good measure into the top of the fence picket on either side. So the last thing we got to think about is how are we going to keep our planted stuff in there? So I'm adding a little shelf to the bottom with scrap one by two. So down here, I lined up my one by twos with the top edge of the fence picket. So there's three there. It's on the top of the bottom one. I stuck those pieces down and then these I can remove, but there's nice drainage. And then you can either put like landscaping fabric over the top or you can go ahead and put your pot right on top of here. So last year when I made these, I chose not to nail down the scrap and I wish I would have. I ended up doing that this spring. So I would recommend nailing those down so they don't move and also be sure to drill holes in the bottom of your planters so that they drain. I forgot to do that last year and I learned the hard way. I really like the two-tone look here and I am going to also do a transparent waterproofing wood finish that you can use on decks just so everything is sealed because I live in Illinois and you never know what the weather's gonna be like. The great part about bringing back these Whiskey Vault projects is I can let you know how they stood up. So these look just like this. I didn't do any refreshing of the color after a long Illinois winter. This was out in all the elements, snow and everything. And then this year we ended up planting them with a bunch of annuals. It was some Thing that Finn helped Alex and I do. It was such a great memory and I absolutely love these planters. Would definitely recommend even if you're in a crazy winter climate like I am. Throughout this video you have been seeing my wood furniture and I built this whole set last year. It is actually a DIY dupe of a pottery barn set that I knew I was never going to be able to afford and that is one of my most popular videos from 2023. If you are interested in seeing how those came together, I will link the video down below as well as up in the iCard so you can check it out if you would like to build your own backyard patio set for a fraction of the cost that it would be to buy it.
that's going to do it for today's video. All I have left to do is grab my infused water and enjoy our outdoor space. Now, if you're interested in my outdoor furniture build, you're going to want to click on this video. And if you're interested in more outdoor wood builds, be sure to click on this playlist. Also, be sure to hit subscribe if you're new so you don't miss a future Whiskey and Wit video. And I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!